Hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming along today. Um, I know it's a busy time of year for a lot of you, so we really appreciate you taking some time out of your day. And yeah, thank you for coming back. Um, Saturday, I had a bit of an internet meltdown. <laughs> so I'm really sorry I couldn't lead the webinar then, but I am back <laughs> and we are ready to answer all of your questions um, over the course of the next hour. Um, just in case you haven't seen me before presenting, my name is Maraid. Um, I'm based in the West of Ireland and I've been teaching on and off, teaching, managing materials writing um, for over 20 years now. Um, so I've been lucky enough to have a great and varied experience in the world of TEFL. Um, I've been working at the TEFL Academy for the last ooh, eight years now. Um, so yeah, hopefully I am in a good position to ask or to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so today, yeah, it's a big questions and answers session. Okay, um, I'm not going to do any presentations. Yeah, I'm just going to watch the chat board. Okay, and I'm going to answer any questions that you have. Um, so please do type in any questions, um, whether it's related to the course, um, course content, whether it's related to jobs, whether it's related to assignments. Um, maybe you have some grammar or pronunciation or phonology questions that you've always been wondering about. Yeah, you can ask me literally anything, okay, related to the world of TEFL. Um, so let's, let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's stay on this view. There we go. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to take a look down through your messages so far and see if any questions have come in. Um, so hello, Brigitte and Han and Lilith. Hey, Lilith. Um, you have a question here. What does the 7H5P stand for? Oh, well, Lilith, this is just um, a technical code. A H5P is basically an interactive task. Okay, so that um, whenever you see H5P, you know that there will be some sort of interaction. Okay, maybe it's a task where you have to drag and drop some answers. Yeah, um, it could be any type of interactive task. Um, you'll find loads of those in the course material just to make it a little more, um, a little more engaging. All right, so Nesisa, hello. Chandra, good to see you, and Nikki. So, hello, Julie. Happy holidays to you too. I hope you're having a, a great week. I hope you all are. Um, I've been eating far too much. <laughs> I think I am 95% chocolate at this stage. Um, so, hello, Carol. Good to see you again. So, Chandra, let's take a look at your question. Um, with grading of assessments um, being five working days, what is the estimated time during busy periods? And what periods tend to be busy for grading assignments? Hmm. Good question, Sandre. So um, as you say, five working days is um, the standard. Yeah, it's often done a lot quicker than that. But yeah, five working days would be the maximum. We do have busy times. Um, now, January has the potential to be a little busy. Um, in which case it, that might be pushed until six or seven working days. Um, but honestly, Chandra, we are pretty good at getting everything turned around. Okay, so it may go a tiny bit over five working days, but not substantially over. Um, I would say that if you have been waiting more than five working days, um, send a ticket to tutor support. Okay, and uh, we will investigate what's happening and make sure that we get your assignment graded quite quickly. Okay, but it shouldn't take longer than five. But if it does, send us a ticket. Um, apologies for the rain. Um, you know, as I said, I'm in Ireland. <laughs> it gets pretty loud. That is rain you can probably hear in the background. Um, so hello, Benedicta and Farusan. Very good. Um, Han, you have a question. Um, I'm studying assimilation right now. Oh, um, in the phonology section, I guess, 
Um, so basically, Han, assimilation means that the end of one word affects the beginning of another. Okay. Um, for example, think about these two words, 10, like the number 10, and boys. Okay. So 10 boys. If I'm saying that quickly, it sounds like 10 boys. Okay. 10 boys. So it almost sounds like there's an M being put in there, right? 10 boys. Okay. So that's an example of assimilation. So when the end sound of one word affects the beginning sound of another. Um, let's think of another example. Um, so in my town in Ireland, we have a street with a very big church on it. <laughs> um, so the name of the street is Church Street. Okay, so church with a ch at the end and street with a s. Um, however, when I say that really quickly, I say church street. So church street. Do you hear? It's like I'm saying shh. Yeah, instead of street, I'm saying street, church street. Okay, that's another example of assimilation. Um, so yeah, it happens a lot when proficient speakers are speaking quickly. It's um, an element of what we call connected speech. Um, so yeah, there we go, Han, that is assimilation. Um, when the final sound of one word affects the first sound of the next word. Okay, um, hopefully that made sense, but do ask more questions if you need more explanation. All right, thank you, Han. Um, so Julie, yeah, I hear you, me too, <laughs> by the second. Um, so hello, Rudy in Southern California. Oh, I bet you're not sitting in the pouring rain, Rudy. Um, well, I'm not sitting in it, but I hear it on my window. Um, okay, Vignes from Finland. Oh, how exciting. You're the first person I've seen here from Finland, Vignes. So you are most welcome. Okay, um, so Julie, let's have a look. I recently completed the level five course, well done, and plan on teaching English in academics. Oh, how interesting. I have teaching experience, but not as an English teacher. How do I market myself to institutions? Mm. Well, Julie, that is an excellent niche market to be into, um, English and academics. Um, you may find, Julie, that jobs are not, uh, jobs in institutions like universities or further um, education colleges, they're not called TEFL, they're called EAP, which stands for English um, for Academic Purposes. Okay, so you may want to search for EAP jobs, yeah, rather than TEFL jobs. Um, other than that, that, Julie, I would say that um, in my experience, you have just got to hit the phones, okay? Hit the emails. Um, if you are in a city with a lot of um, educational institutions like universities, call in and see them. Um, pretty much every big educational um, institution, every third level, every big third level educational institution will have um, some sort of English teaching program for their study abroad students, okay? so. Don't panic if you don't see jobs advertised. You have just got to get in contact with them. Okay. Um, I would say try to write a really strong cover letter or cover email. Um, explain to them that you have your level five and then really emphasize the fact that you have experience in academia and with academic writing. Um, because a lot of TEFL teachers you know, they don't have that experience in academic writing. As you know, it's a very, very um, niche <laughs> skill to have. All right. So, yeah, just put yourself out there, Julie. You know, lots of calls, lots of emails, lots of in-person visiting if possible. And make it crystal clear in your cover letter that you have both a, a level five cert and lots of experience in the world of academics. OK, um, yeah. Good luck with that, Julie. There is a ton of work out there. Um, you know, you will never be short of a job because it is such a such a niche teaching sector. Um, all right, thank you, Julie. Good luck. Um, I'm sure you will have no problem. 
um, no problem finding something. It's just a matter of making sure everyone knows that you're there and ready. Okay, so hello, Eric. Do many TEFL holders report success with online teaching? Yes. Can one realistically expect to develop a full-time career as an online TEFL instructor? Absolutely. Yes, um, I have done it myself. Um, so with online teaching, Eric, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Um, you can sign up with an online school um, and they will book your hours for you. Um, you know, you tell them your availability and they assign you classes. Um, that's a really nice way to get started because it allows you to just concentrate on the actual teaching side. OK, um, you know, they do all the admin for you. Um, it's also really good because you can get experience teaching a variety of different age groups, different levels, etc. Um, the thing is, Eric, depending on the online school you sign up with, um, they may be very busy and have full time hours for you or they may not. OK, um, so you may find that you start off maybe teaching um, part time or you start off with just taking a few classes here and there. Um, if that's the case, it can take some time for you to build up your hours to full time hours. OK, um, but again, it totally depends on the online school you sign up with. Um, alternatively, Eric, if you didn't want to sign up with any specific online school, um, you could market yourself as freelance, yeah, as a freelance tutor. Um, there are also some platforms out there like Preply, um, where you know you put your profile online, and students, if they, if the students like what they see, they will contact you, and you can arrange lessons like that. Um, if you do go down the freelance route, um, again, it can sometimes take some time to build up to full time hours. OK, you might start off a little slower and then gradually, you know, as your name gets out there and as you attract more students, then you build up to full time. Um, but it is very, very possible, Eric. Um, you know, I've done it. I know a lot of teachers who have done it. Um, if you get to unit 10 of the online course, um, there is a section there on jobs and how to find work. Um, so that will give you some tips on how to market yourself as an online teacher. Um, also keep an eye out on all of the various jobs boards. OK, and then it just depends. Do you want to jump in and go freelance and market yourself or do you want to sign up with an online school? OK, um, a lot of people will start with an online school and then once they have the experience, they will they will dive into the freelance work. Um, but yes, Eric, that was a very long answer to say that, yes, it is possible. OK, good luck with it. Um, I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. OK, Carol, for students who are having anxiety and feeling overwhelmed with preparation of assignments, who can you please give us some simple steps to start climbing the mountain? Oh, yeah, I know, Carol, I know it. The assignments are a lot. OK. Um, but, you know, the reason that the assignments are a lot is that um, our level five course is very um, strictly accredited um, by our awarding bodies. So, you know, it just goes to show that we will not be handing out certificates left and right. OK, um, you know, you've really got to demonstrate that you are taking on board all of the content. And the way to prove this is by doing the assignments. OK, so I guess the first thing is just to accept the assignments into your life. <laughs> OK, try not to fight against them. Um, try not to hate them too much. OK, because they have to be done. All right. So um, accepting the, <laughs> the existence of the assignments would be my first tip. Um, other words, Carol, I would say to start off, make sure that you're organized from the very beginning. OK, um, you've probably seen that the assignments have a lot of templates that come with them. You know, they have a lot of associated um, templates that you've got to fill out. They come with extra information. They come with referencing guides, assessment guides. OK, um, it can really seem like a lot of information at once. Um, so I would say when you reach the part of the um, course where you need to do an assignment, open a new folder, create a new folder on your laptop 
and download all of the templates like straight away, even if you don't know what they are yet. Download them all and put them in your folder. OK, that means that when you go to look for stuff, you don't have to keep logging on and finding the page. Yeah, you have everything right there in your folder on your laptop or PC. OK, um, once you have everything downloaded, um, make sure that you watch all of the related video explanations for each assignment. Um, every assignment will have a video explanation just before you get to the instructions page. So please do watch that. Um, it gives you a really good overview. And while it doesn't go into every every tiny, tiny detail, it's a good place to start because it gives you a nice overview of the assignment as a whole. OK, and then, Carol, it's just a matter of reading through the instructions. OK, looking at the templates, seeing exactly what is required on each one. OK, um, a lot of the assignments have four or five or six even um, different steps to follow. So, you know, pick a starting point and start there. OK, try not to jump around all of the different parts all of the time, because then it feels like you're never getting anything done. Um, so if, for example, you're doing assignment A, open um, level five assignment A, open the template for text one and focus on that. OK, and focus on that until you're finished. <laughs> all right. Um, when you're happy with that, go to text two, make sure you know what to do and do it. OK, um, so basically bit by bit, Carol. And if at any point you're having problems understanding the instructions, um, please send a ticket to Tutor Support. Um, there is a team on Tutor Support um, pretty much every, you know, 24-7. Yeah, um, we are checking it multiple, multiple times a day. All right. So any questions that you have about anything, about the course content or about the assignment or about the assignment instructions, send a ticket to Tutor Support. And yeah, good luck. Bit by bit, Carol, honestly. And before you know it, you're done. OK. OK, hello, Nikki. How do you teach students to pronounce the TH sounds? Oh, interesting. Um, so, uh, Nikki, as you probably know, there are two TH sounds. OK, well, two sounds that would correspond to the letters TH. Um, if you think about, let's see, let's think about the TH sound in father or mother. OK, um, if you know the IPA alphabet, it kind of looks like the, the sideways D with the little line through the top. OK, so um, let's take the word mother as an example. So mother, OK, mother. Um, so if you say that word, what do you notice the tip of your tongue doing? OK, so mother you'll probably find that it's up behind your top teeth, like th, okay, mother. Um, so the easiest way to teach your students how to make the sound is to tell them what their mouth has to do, okay? So tell them, take your tongue, put it behind your top teeth and slide it down over your teeth, <laughs> okay? Um, that sounds very technical, uh, but, you know, do lots of examples for them so that they can say the, the, the. The. So it's kind of starting up behind your teeth and it's coming down. OK, so you really need to like work through the mechanics of it. You know, what's happening? Where's your tongue? What's happening with your teeth? Yeah, all that sort of thing. Explain the mechanics and then give them like a ton of example words so that they can practice. All right. So that would be the v, like mother. Um, the other TH sound is the th. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Th. Um, again, you'll do the same thing. Ask them, where is your tongue? What's it doing? Th. And in that one, you'll notice that your tongue is sticking right out between your teeth. OK. Th thank you. Thank you. OK. So again, make them do it. Raise their awareness of the mechanics of where everything is and then give them a ton of example words. OK, so that they can practice. And when you think that they are fine with the the and the th, 
Okay, then you can start like giving them little practice sentences where you're mixing in, um, you know, um, both sounds and that will give them the chance to practice moving between tongue behind the teeth, tongue between the teeth. Okay, like, uh, thank you, mother. Yeah, thank you, father. That's really interesting. All right. Um, and yeah, the same, you know, the same, Nikki, with any sounds, whenever you're doing any phonetics, um, really get in there and tell them like your, your tongue is here, your mouth is, you know, doing this. It's your tongue is on the top of your mouth. The tongue is behind your teeth. Yeah, just get in there. <laughs> get in there and explain the mechanics. All right. Lovely. Thank you, Nikki. Hopefully that helped. Uh, so, Brigitta, happy holidays. Same to you, Brigitta. They are very happy. Thank you. Um, when we signed up for TEFL, it said we would have access to other certificates that will come after the main certification, or is it the main course? Uh, so, um, Brigitta, I know depending on the option that you chose, you may have got some what we call top up courses along with the main level five. Um, so, typically, Brigitta, as soon as you're finished the main level five, um, emails or send a ticket to student services and they will activate your top up course, whichever one you chose. OK, or it could be that you send them a ticket saying that you finished and you would like to activate your top up course. And then they will they will ask you, OK, which ones do you want to do or which one do you want to do? They will activate it and off you go. OK. So, um, yeah, definitely send a ticket to student support or student services and they will help you. All right. So hello, Jenny from Toronto, Canada. First time on the webinar. Just signed up yesterday. Oh, excellent. Lovely to meet you, Jenny. Welcome. Um, do we have these webinars every weekend for Q&A? Um, so, Jenny, how it works is that the webinars are normally a Saturday. OK, um, this is as a bit of an exception because, um, yeah, I had issues <laughs> with the internet on Saturday, um, which is why it's Wednesday. But normally it will be Saturday. Um, they're not always Q&A, Jenny. Um, most weeks there will be like a, a specific theme, um, like teaching pronunciation or teaching grammar. Um, and the webinar presenter will present for maybe 30 minutes on whatever the theme is. And then the second 30 minutes will be a Q&A on that specific topic. OK, so um, unfortunately, you can't ask every question every time. OK, the webinars are normally themed, but yes, we like to have these Q&As every so often, just uh, just so you can ask whatever's on your mind. All right. So hello, Letiani. It's your first time as well. Oh, welcome. Welcome, South Africa. <laughs> um, I hope you really enjoy the course, Lithiani. Um, You know, any questions that you ever have about the course content or about assignments, please send a ticket to Tutor Support. Um, you'll see on the online course, there is the facility to open a ticket. OK, that is how you communicate with us. Um, if you have any questions related to administration or enrollment or expiration dates or anything, send a ticket to, to student support. All right, so welcome. So great to see new people with us today. OK, um, Eric, you are welcome. Um, so Lilith, with the level three certificate as a non-native speaker, what are the chances to get a teaching job, whether it be online or on site? Um, well, L Lilith, luckily, um, you have very good chances. OK. Um, very thankfully, the world of TEFL is moving away from the whole native, non-native speaker thing. OK, thankfully, <laughs> and it's about time. Um, so, you know, even the terms native speaker and non-native, you know, we're trying to replace that with proficient. Um, so, you know, don't feel the need to introduce yourself as a non-native teacher. You know, you are a proficient speaker of English. And as such, you know, you go for every job you want to go for and you will have the same chances. OK, um, so, yeah, definitely that should not be an issue. All right. Thank you, Lilith. OK, Alicia, hello, or Alicia. 
um, I'm pronouncing it the Spanish way. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so I'll call you Alicia. That was my instinct. Um, what is your advice on getting high marks in the assignments? Um, well, Alicia, I would say um, make sure you understand exactly what you need to do. OK, make sure you are crystal clear on the instructions. And then in order to get high marks, um, you know, you need to go beyond the basic. Um, you need to try and show us that you can go beyond the basic understanding of something. OK, like it's not only that you find a really good task, um, like a worksheet, but you find a way to make that worksheet really interactive and you find a way to really engage the students with it. OK, or, um, you know, if it comes to a grammar assignment, um, you're not just giving like the basic form of the structure, you're telling us, you know, where the subject goes, okay? Um, in the questions, you're, you're pointing out that the, you know, the subject and the auxiliary verb will invert, okay? You know, you're just giving that extra added value to the assignment, you know, you're, you're going beyond what is just the basic information. Okay, um, as well, if you can include, you know, a lot of detail in your lesson plans or in your assignments or your teacher instructions or your teacher language, you know, that will also go a long way towards boosting your mark. Okay, so, you know, if you're putting together a lesson plan, you know, give lots of information in the procedure, like really help your markers visualize what is going on. Okay, um, so yeah, there we go. Hopefully that helps, Alicia. Just yeah, try to try to elevate your work um, as much as you can. OK, um, Carol, are we permitted to sign up more than one online school or do the schools require you to only work with them? Um, I think, Carol, that would depend on the individual school. You know, some schools are absolutely fine with you, um, you know, working for multiple places. Um, normally we sign up as freelancers, right? Um, so, you know, I would say that freelancers tend to have a couple of different jobs going on at the same time. Um, but yeah, it definitely, you know, it's definitely worth asking the question um, to whatever school you sign up with. Um, but yeah, flexibility is good. OK, um, I don't know if you know the saying, putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, I think as freelancers, we typically want to avoid that. We want to like um, spread ourselves around a little bit. <laughs> so that um, we're never too dependent on one thing. Um, but yeah, you you ask the school you sign up with. That's a really good interview question, actually, when they ask you if you have any other questions. Um, yeah, you can find out there and make your decisions based on what they tell you. All right, so Daniel, hello. Um, do you have any tips for someone planning to work in online English teaching? Um, what is the difference? What is the biggest difference between finding an English teaching job online and an English teaching job in person? Um, well, honestly, Daniel, there isn't that big a difference in finding work. OK. Um, normally, you know, when we're teaching English in person abroad, um, we normally still do our job search online, you know, and we do our interviews online and, you know, we do all of the all of the application stuff online. Um, so in terms of actually finding a job and going through the process of being hired, it's not that different. Um, when you actually do the job, I guess the biggest difference, um, I mean, it sounds obvious, but the biggest difference is the technology aspect. Um, when you're teaching in person, you know, when you have the people sitting right in front of you and you can, you know, look at them and you can interact, um, you know, on a personal level, um, it can be much easier to build a rapport with your students when you're online. Um, sorry, when you're in person, it's much easier to build that rapport. Um, online, it can be a bit trickier because there is always that, um, you know, that distance of, you know, that technology creates and you're only looking at each other on webcams, for example. Um, so you need to work a little bit harder, I think, to build that connection with your students. You know, you need to spend a lot of time just, you know, OK, students may think it's just chatting. Yeah, but really it's you getting to know them, allowing them to get to know you, you finding out their interests and everything, you know, going that extra mile to build the connection before you start actually teaching them stuff. OK, um, 
Apart from that, Daniel, I would say just, um, again, technology related, your knowledge of different um, technology, um, different technology types. Like in online teaching, we need to work really hard to keep our students engaged. So, you know, we might want to do loads of online quizzes, lots of web searches. You know, we've got to find apps or tools to use um, to, you know, to make the material engaging and to hold their attention. OK, so, you know, you'll probably you probably spend a lot more time um, researching different technology and different apps um, when you're teaching online than you would if you were teaching on person in person. OK, um, but apart from that, Daniel, you know, the procedures are the same. The lesson planning is the same. OK, your, you know, how you present language is the same. OK, so it's it's not all that different. All right. Just uh, yeah, be prepared to go that extra mile to build rapport with your students first. And yeah, keep on top of all of the latest technology <laughs> that you can use in your classes. All right. So hello, Colour of Art. Um, I was wondering, since it's not necessary to know your students' first language, true, how would you go about starting a lesson or explaining things they don't understand? Um, well, actually, this is <laughs> this is a really good question, Colour of Art. Um, I was literally talking about this with um, some of my family today. Um, you know, they were asking me, how do you do it? How do you teach English to people who know no English? Um, so I'm going to tell you what I told them. Um, so think about how you would explain something normally, okay? And then pair it back to like its bare minimum, okay? Um, so, you know, instead of, you know, something you might say to your friends like, oh, wow, that I really, I thought that film was incredible. I mean, it was so gripping, okay? Um, you know, to somebody who does not speak a lot of English, you would probably bring in a picture um, like a poster of the film or a picture of a cinema and you were probably saying oh this film or this movie it's really good yeah wow <laughs> okay um so like you you think about what you would normally say like how you would normally explain something and then you pair it back like to the bare minimum okay you know you're using really um basic adjectives like good you know like you know you could indicate them with body language too like good or happy or bad or you know um boring oh. okay um you're using a ton of pictures whenever you can okay like if you're if you're explaining something about say a car and traffic no you will bring in a picture of a car you will bring in a picture of traffic <laughs> okay um you if you don't have a picture you might draw one on the board okay um if you're talking about emotions you're really going to use a lot of acting like happy or like oh, excited okay or like hmm, sad or oh boring or mm, interesting okay um it can feel a bit um unnatural at first like when you find yourself doing it um, but remember, it's only unnatural for you because you haven't done it before. Um, this, it won't be unnatural to your students. OK, they will just be delighted that they can understand you. And, you know, it's it's your job to do whatever you need to do to help them to understand. Um, bear in mind, too, if you are teaching beginners. OK, they won't be learning complex stuff. OK, you know, um, they will be starting at the beginning with the easy stuff. OK, so that will make it easier for you to gauge what they can understand and not. All right. Good. So hello, Flavia. After finishing the 10 units, they will send us an email to complete the 30 hours for top up course. Um, yeah, Flavia, um, as far as I know, they will. And if Student Services doesn't email you, you get in touch with them. OK, just send out an email even as you're coming to the end of unit 10 you know even before you're finished say okay, i'm just about to finish unit 10 can you please tell me how to access my top up course okay um okay nikki i have tried that but they still experience difficulties with it yeah 
I know, it can be tough, especially like when the sounds don't exist in their own language. Um, I think, Nikki, just keep practicing, okay? Um, you know, there is no other um, magical way that we can do it. You know, we've just, they've got to work at it. They've got to work hard. Um, you've got to practice consistently, okay? Um, I found with, um, well, actually, I was going to say young learners, but I think I've done it with every age and it always works pretty well. Um, if you can find like little mirrors, like, you know, little makeup mirrors, um, it can really help them. Like if they can look at themselves and see, you know, you can say like, oh, can you see your tongue sticking out? Th, th, th. Can you see it? If you can't see it, it's not right. Okay. Or like for the the the. You know, you can say, okay, now look, the, can you see your tongue moving down? Can you see it? Okay. Um, maybe that could be another thing you could do, like make them physically look at themselves. Um, if they have smartphones, you can put them, you know, you can tell them to put the camera facing them. So that will work as a mirror too. Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe try that. Uh, but above all, just keep practicing, you know, just consistency. They will get there eventually. <laughs> And uh, you know what, Nikki, if they don't, I mean, as long as they can still be understood, that's the main thing, okay? Like if they're just not getting it and they're doing their best and it's not happening, you know, ask yourself, can they still be understood the way they say it? And if they can, perhaps that's good enough. All right, thank you, Nikki. Okay, JJ. Um, oh, you have some advice for Carol. Awesome. I created my own checklist for each part of the assignment, which included instructions, expectations, and how it'll be assessed. I ensured all were checked before moving on to the next part. Oh, JJ, loving it. That's a great procedure. That is very methodical. Yeah, I really like that. Thank you, JJ. Um, Nikki, you're doing it the right way. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're doing it. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of our students will expect us to have that magic answer. And sometimes there just is no magic answer. Actually, there is hardly ever a magic answer. Okay, it's just hard work and practice. Okay, so Chandra, after completing the level five diploma, will we need to purchase the top up courses? Um, so Chandra, it depends on the, the package or the bundle that you purchased. Um, some button, some packages will come with the top-up courses included, um, others will not. So if there is um, a top-up course that you really want to do, but that isn't included in your level five course, um, then you will have to purchase it, okay? Um, but if it comes included in the bundle, then you won't. Um, so yeah, I would say if you're not sure, send a ticket to student services and they will tell you exactly um, what you purchased and what you can access and if you do need to purchase them they will give you all of the pricing details all right good um so hello Vinyas. i have a feeling i'm not saying that properly i'm sorry <laughs> um how can we find out about the topic that will be discussed at the webinar um so Every Wednesday-ish, well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday-ish, um, you will see it on your course dashboard. So you know when you log into your course where you see all of the units, um, above that, there will be a link to the webinar and that will tell you what the topic of the next webinar is going to be, okay? Um, if you want to see all of the past webinars, because we've been doing these a couple of years now, um, go along to the TEFL Academy's YouTube channel. Okay, so go to YouTube, type in the TEFL Academy and search, and you will find all of the past webinars too. Okay, so there's a ton of webinars um, for you to catch up on as and when you have time. Okay, um, you know, it's not obligatory to watch them, absolutely not, but it, you know, it's just something nice that you can do, especially if there's a part of the course that you would like more information on. Um, but yeah, look at your dashboard early on in the week and it will give you the link to the upcoming Saturday's webinar. Okay, uh, so Nori, hello. Um, I missed a couple of webinars, no problem. I hope to do better. Oh, you already are, Nori. 
you know, just do it as and when you have time. Um, you know, it, it's tough, right? It, it's tough to combine um, work and real life <laughs> and study. <laughs> you know, it's it's really tough. Um, you know, I'm, I can hear my, my two-year-old screaming downstairs. <laughs> um, she's not on her own, don't worry. But I know it's really tough when you're trying to combine study with real life. Um, you know, you can just do the best that you can do. And I'm sure you're doing absolutely fine. All right. So, Brigitte, when doing the assignments using the templates that trigger copyright or no, no. How do you, for example, quote someone on it without getting copywritten? And do we have a biography at the end or a bibliography at the end? Um, so, Brigitte, using the templates will not get you in any trouble. Um, in fact, you have to use the templates. OK, that is compulsory for all of the assignments. Um, so if you don't um, submit your work on the templates we provide, you will be asked to resubmit. OK, um, so don't worry about the templates. You have to use them. You have no choice and you will not get in trouble <laughs> for infringing on anything if you use them. Um, if you are using other sources in your um, in your work, like if you are using some online some information from the online course, for example, to help you structure a task, um, you know, all you need to do is reference that in the bibliography, um, because yes, you do need to provide a bibliography at the end. Okay, um, so you know, as long as you reference everything in your bibliography, you will be fine. Okay, um, you don't have to do in-text referencing. Okay, that's that's not strictly necessary. You know, you can just put everything at the end in the bibliography. Um, in the um, in assignment A for level five and level three, um, you will find a document all about referencing, and it's just like a guide that will tell you how to reference every type of of source. Okay, so take a good look at that. And uh, yeah, that will explain how to put together your bibliography. OK, um, but yeah, definitely use the templates. OK, that is a non-negotiable. All right. And so, Carol, you are very welcome. I'm glad that it is helping. Um, so, Letiani on assignments. I was hoping there would be an online tutorial that gives us some hints since I don't have any teaching background. Is it sufficient to reference using only internet sources? Um, so if you look, let's see, any, if you go to our YouTube channel and you type in the TEFL Academy, um, you will see that every couple of months we do a webinar just on assignments. Okay. And we go through what you need to do for each one. Um, so I would recommend that you go along to YouTube and um, find the latest one. I think there was one last month. I have a feeling I did one about four or five weeks ago. But anyway, go to our list of webinars, find the latest one on assignments and look at it. OK, um, that will hopefully help you um, a lot with the assignment. Um, other words or other words, otherwise. Um, send a ticket to Choose Your Support if there's anything we can help with. OK, um, Choose Your Support is always there uh, to help with your assignment questions. Um, don't suffer in silence. <laughs> OK, don't sit there with doubts. OK, um, reach out for help. Um, is it sufficient to reference only Internet sources? Um, yeah, absolutely. I can't see a problem with that. OK, I know not everyone will have um, access to like physical teaching methodology books or like physical course books. So yeah, the internet is absolutely fine. Um, and you can also reference the course content. Okay, um, that will be more than fine. Um, as I said, there will be a referencing guide with assignment A telling you how to reference yeah, all of the, the different sources. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, Nikki, a mirror. Excellent. Hey, Nikki, it seems like you're doing absolutely everything perfectly. <laughs> okay, just keep doing it. Keep practicing. You're, you're doing a great job. All right. Um, so let's see, do we have any more questions? Ooh, I feel like I've been talking a lot. <laughs> um, 
thank you for all of your great questions. Um, all right, so I don't see any more questions, so I'm just going to do a quick run through and make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, because, yeah, I would hate to miss a question. Mm. All right. Let's have a look. I think I've answered everything. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice to see the, the first timers come along. Um, I hope you're you're having a pleasant introduction to the course. <laughs> um, I know it can seem like a lot when you're just starting out, but you know, just work through those units and before you know it, you will be flying. Um, I think just, yeah, ask for help whenever you need it. Okay, like uh, when we start teaching, we always tell our students, like, have, you know, ask questions. Okay, questions are good. Mistakes are good. <laughs> okay, um, so, you know, take that on board yourselves. You know, it, it's all part of the learning process and always ask, choose your support for help if there's, if there's something you don't, uh, you don't understand. Okay, oh, Brigitte, I did miss one of your questions, I'm sorry. Um, can you suggest any online schools where we can join? Um, well, Brigitte, honestly, no. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't like recommending places that I haven't worked for personally. Um, I would say just, you know, apply for anything that looks interesting to you. Um, make sure you have it very, very clear in your head. Um, you know, what you need from the job and what you expect them to provide. And then just go with whoever gives you what you need. Okay. Um, I would say, Brigitte, that sometimes um, online schools, they will hire you and they will expect you to make your own teaching material. Um, my advice would be not to accept a job like that. Okay. Um, only accept a job that provides material for you. Okay. If you are signing up with an online school, um, make sure you ask them, are you providing materials? And if they say no, do not take it. <laughs> OK, um, creating your own material is a lot of work and it's very, very time consuming. OK, so whatever job you take, make sure that materials are provided um, by the online school. Now, of course, you will probably supplement it with your own stuff and that's absolutely fine. You know. You, as you find out what your students are interested in and what they need, you will probably find yourself bringing in your own stuff. Um, but yeah, make sure that you get the, the basic materials um, provided for you. All right, uh, but otherwise, otherwise, yeah, do your research. Um, we have a really good webinar actually on teaching online and another one on avoiding scams when it comes to to working in TEFL. Um, so, you know, go to our YouTube channel, find both of those webinars on teaching English online and avoiding scams. And that will give you a lot of helpful information. All right. Okay. Um, and Carol, uh, yes, Karen, that's just the question I answered. And I gave the, <laughs> the rather annoying answer of not giving you any recommendations. Okay, because yeah, I do not like to recommend places that I have not, uh, I have not worked for myself. Okay, um, you know, I know it's, uh, I know there are a lot of options out there when it comes to online schools, but really, you've just got to do your research and pick the one that best works for you. Okay. And Brigitte, you are so welcome. Um, I'm glad that was helpful. Okay, um, so I don't see any more questions, okay? But we do still have 10 minutes left, okay? So, um, you know, I never like to leave early. <laughs> um, you'll find out when you start teaching. Um, you you can never finish early. <laughs> okay, we've got to uh, got to make the most of our time. Um, I'm sure there will be um, some more questions that you have if you think about it a little more. 
um, if you have any questions about grammar, okay, or any questions about pronunciation, um, or, you know, any questions about speaking activities, um, reading, writing, or listening activities. Um, if you have any questions about classroom management, yeah, or, you know, living abroad, working abroad, um, maybe, you know, how many hours you would typically teach. Okay, now is the chance. We have, we still have 10 minutes. So I'm just going to stay here <laughs> until I'm absolutely sure that there are no more questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I see we had a lot of questions about the top-up courses today. Um, we actually have a really good range of top-up courses. Um, we have one on teaching business English, you know, if that was something that you ever wanted to get involved in. Um, again, um, like I was telling Julie, um, she asked about English for academic purposes. That's quite niche. Um, teaching business English is also quite niche. It's an interesting one to get into. Um, so if perhaps you are um, planning a career change, maybe before you worked in something business related and now you're getting into the world of TEFL, um, you know, just know that there's a lot of demand for um, business English teachers where you would teach um, in company. OK, um, so in terms of top up courses, we have teaching business English. We have teaching young learners, which is quite an interesting one. And, you know, if you want to go down the route of teaching and, you know, very young children. Um, so, yeah, you can check those out. There may be something of interest. OK. Um, so, Alicia, is it possible to teach full time online and study full time um, or would it be better to teach part time? Oh, I guess, Alicia, it just depends on. Um, your capacity for for retaining information. Um, I think it would be a really tough thing to do. Um, I have worked full time and studied part time. Um, I've never done both full time, um, which is not to say that it's impossible. You know, I'm sure a lot of people do it and do it really well. But um, if it were at all possible, I think that if I were um, if I were um, working full time, I would try to study part time. OK, or vice versa. Uh, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> uh, there's nothing to say that it is not possible to do both full time. OK, uh, so Nikki, um, how do we get students to stop adding the E sound? Oh, Nikki, are you teaching Spanish speakers? <laughs> <laughs> These sound like uh, very much Spanish speaker um, pronunciation problems. Um, so, Nikki, the way I did this, um, so remember we talked before about the mirror. Um, I would get them to say like, eh, 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 s, 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 eh, eh. It's quite an interesting one because like the, the shape of your mouth um, changes entirely. Okay, like if it's an eh or if it's a s. So yeah, work a lot with the mirror, work a lot with mouth position on that one. And if they're saying, for example, if you want them to say school and they're saying s school, they can see that their mouth is like going into the, the wrong position. Okay. Um, so this is another one. There is no quick fix to this one, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it's all practice and consistency and letting them know where, you know, what their mouth needs to be doing at the start of the word. OK, because um, I think with I often think with pronunciation, um, sometimes the differences are so minor. You know, to to hear them, they're so minor, but anything we can do to like show like a physical representation of that can be really helpful because then they can say, ah, okay, that is wrong because my mouth is doing X when it should be doing Y. All right. Um, so, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's for all of you guys. Whenever you're doing pronunciation, 
practice or like if you're if you're practicing individual sounds you know really work on the mechanics when you're lesson planning you know figure it out yourself look at yourself in a mirror <laughs> okay like mirror close up on your mouth make sure you know um, what everything is doing and where everything should be okay and really get into the mechanics of it um yeah oh pronunciation is so fun i could just talk about it forever um it's just endlessly interesting even though it may not feel like that at the beginning <laughs> like it can feel a bit overwhelming at the beginning but once you get into it i i probably it is just so interesting okay um all right so thank you all for your very kind thank yous um you know i i am the one who who should be thanking all of you for your great questions um you know we cannot run these these types of webinars without you and all of your questions so you are the ones uh deserving of all the gratitude okay um so we have two more minutes all right um so if you don't have any more questions you know, you can absolutely uh, go about your day. And thank you so much for coming in. Uh, but if you do have another question, um, I have another two minutes. Um, I'd prefer to just wait until our time is up. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Carol. That's that's so kind. Um, and the same to you and your family. Um, I hope 2024 has, has a lot of exciting teaching adventures ahead. Um, I'm sure it does. You know, when you think about it, everyone, you you are, you know, you're all doing your course. You are all going to finish in 2024. Okay, you're going to be qualified TEFL teachers. All right. You know, this could be the start of a whole new adventure. <laughs> um, you never know where it's going to take you. Okay. Um, so, hello, Joe. What was your favorite country to teach in or online too? Um, well, I would say, Joe, my favorite country to teach in um, is, well, Ireland <laughs> um, or Spain. Like, um, I was in Spain for nearly 10 years. Um, it's just a beautiful country. It's, it's, it's really, really amazing. Um, so I would say that Spain was my number one, but very closely followed by Ireland. Um, so yeah, but really every country, you know, every country has its um, its massive, massive pros and the odd occasional con. Okay, you will always find something to love no matter where you go. All right. And JJ, how did I become a TEFL Academy teacher? Oh, well, um, JJ, um, I was, or Julie, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Julie, I was... Um, I did languages as my degree and when I graduated I um, well I did TEFL also as part of my degree um, so when I graduated I left and I traveled for what 12 13 years okay and then in 2015 I moved home to Ireland um, I saw the TEFL Academy advertising for a weekend tutor Okay, so I started doing that. I used to do the weekend face-to-face -face, um, course. And then after a year of that, I moved into the grading and the marking and the tutor support. And yeah, I've been here ever since and also still teaching along the way. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a wonderful journey. <laughs> I've been very, very lucky. Okay. Um, so, Saju, hello. I haven't seen your name in a while. Um, good to see you again. Um, I really struggle with classroom management of five 11 year olds. Any tips? Oh, gosh. Um, so, Saju, I think at the age of 11, um, really what they want is control. Okay. <laughs> um, 11 year olds, you know, they're moving out of the baby stage. Um, they want to feel like they're in control. Um, so, anything you can do, Saju, in terms of giving them, um, control like you can say okay i have two tasks here to do okay this one is blah 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 this one is blah 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 which one do you want to do okay um giving them that option of control 
um, can often, you know, help them to buy in um, to the spirit of the lesson, which is collaboration, cooperation. OK, they won't act out so much if you can just find ways to let them choose what they do, um, even if it's as simple as, OK, um, if everything goes well and we get all of our work done, we're going to play a really fun game at the end. Um, I'm going to let you choose which one. OK, here are three options you choose. OK, um, apart from that, Saji, I would say, um, you know, if you need to talk to them about any discipline issues, um, don't do it in front of the class, you know, take them aside, you know, treat them like adults, you know, give them the same respect that you would give an adult. OK, don't, you know, call them out in front of their friends. OK, um, take them aside, speak to them respectfully, um, you know, move away from that, treating them like children and, and start to uh, treat them more like adults. Um, I'm sure you do this already. OK, but it's really just something to bear in mind. Because um, if they sense that you're patronizing them or you're treating them like kids, then they're going to act up. Guaranteed. It's the age. It's a difficult age. <laughs> OK, so. Hopefully that helps. All right. Okay. Um, so look at that, everybody. Our time is up. Okay. I knew we would get enough questions for the hour. And I'm sure if we stayed longer, we would have even more. Um, so, oh, Joe, I see you mentioned Ireland in a comment. <laughs> I am immediately interested. I'm from Alabama. Oh, Joe, I have cousins in Alabama. Um, Lafayette. That's Alabama, right? Um, I spent six months touring Scotland and Ireland. Oh, amazing. Oh, what a fun holiday. Oh, I'd love to go to Scotland. I've never been. Um, so yeah, good. Oh, I'm so glad you had a nice time, Joe. Um, I wish I could hear you speaking like this accent, the accent from Alabama and from the South is just my favorite thing in the world. All right, so thank you so much for coming, everybody. Um, I really appreciate it. And again, thank you for coming back. Um, I'm really sorry about Saturday <laughs> and having to reschedule, but hopefully we won't have any more technical issues from now on. Um, just before I go, um, I'm just going to remind you that, um, as I said before, all the previous webinars are available on our YouTube channel in the video section. Okay, we have years worth of webinars. Okay, so no matter what, um, topic you are having an issue with, I guarantee there will be a webinar about that. Okay, so please do check it out. Okay, and um, apart from that, I would also like you, if you have time, to complete a short um, survey on our webinar. Um, we're always trying to improve, we're always open to ideas. If you have any suggestions for future webinars, you know, please take a moment and give us your thoughts. Um, I'm also going to post the web address into the chat box so you can click on it directly. Maybe that's easier than scanning QR codes. All right. OK, so I hope you all enjoy the rest of the holiday season um, and have a wonderful new year. And yeah, hopefully we'll catch up again soon. All right, everyone, thanks so much for coming. Bye-bye.